please rise for reading of the gospel. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are now at the beginning of the liturgical church year, which means that we are at Advent, in case the blue vestments and pyramids didn't give it away. Advent is Latin for the word coming or to come. Adventus being the great coming of Christ. However, theologians happen to get a few things wrong most of the time. When we talk about Advent is to come, we begin numbering the comings of Christ, which is not always helpful, in particular because we think of the coming as the birth of Christ and the second coming as the time when earth shall disappear and the new Jerusalem we shall attend. However, I don't know that it's exactly good for us to number them, but for the sake of order, I'm going to. The first coming is everything that the law and the prophets promised us it would be. Christ, the child, into the womb of Mary. In that great coming, We see a lot. However, we have a question here in Matthew chapter 21. Why is it Palm Sunday? Or at least the reading for the Lenten Palm Sunday. It doesn't make much sense unless we understand the word for Advent. That is, again, the coming. And what we can learn from this Palm Sunday text is a lot about the first coming of Christ. Again, look at, the na- look at the words that are used. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, notice that word, came to Bethpage. And once again, we see in the prophetic words, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. And so, we have an advent right here in the midst of our Palm Sunday text. Christ comes in flesh and in blood into the womb of Mary. Notice that because when Christ comes to the womb of Mary... We can see right here in our image, and this is one of my favorite images of Christ. A lot of images of Christ has Mary holding him, and he's awake, and he has the fingers in blessing. This image, however, has Christ asleep on Mary and his mouth open, as most babies do. In every way, this Jesus is a true baby. And it's hard for us to imagine the king of kings sitting on his mother's lap. However, the reason I love this image so much is because he is humble, he has humility, and in every way, he was Mary's son. Begotten by the Father in whom the Holy Spirit spoke to Mary and she was with child. And so that is the first coming. However, that text of of Christ coming to Mary humbly is the exact same text that we see in our Palm Sunday text. Notice that. Say Say to the daughters of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, just like the infant Christ, mounted on a donkey, on the colt, the fold of a beast of burden. 
And just as we have a hard time thinking of Christ as a baby, as a sleeping baby, and in every way, the flesh and blood of a baby, so also we have a hard time with Christ coming into Jerusalem. Why? Because that baby, that humble and sleeping baby, would be crucified until dead. And so in that, we have a very hard time understanding it. And I don't think we ever will understand it. I don't think that I could ever preach a sermon that would completely enfold the Christ child being raised until he was in the temple and his parents rather cross with him until he called his disciples, continued to teach until all the disciples and apostles except for John would flee away from him because of the ugliness of the cross. And he would be crucified until dead. That same Christ child who adventus us. Christ who comes in the name of the Lord to be crucified for us and also risen from the dead. Because the cross is not the end of the story, Christ would rise again from the dead, giving us hope, giving us the promise, and giving us the glory of the Father infused in us through the Holy Spirit. And so we have that first coming of Christ. What people call the second coming of Christ, I'm not going to call the second coming of Christ. Why? Because I'm counting. We're going to talk about the third coming of Christ, which is often called the second coming of Christ. Christ who comes to judge the quick and the dead. Christ who comes to destroy our world and take us, meeting Him in the middle of the air, to take us to the new Jerusalem. Notice the symmetry in that. Christ who enters the Jerusalem by a colt humbly, then comes to bring us to the new Jerusalem, who in power and might and no humility, but in glory given to Him by the Father, He comes again to judge the quick and the dead. But make no mistake, Lutherans do not fear the coming of Christ. Many denominations do. In fact, it is, it is typically the one that everyone understands, at least denominations. They throw around quotes like, are you ready for the second coming of Christ, or the third coming of Christ since I'm counting? Are you ready? Have you made peace with God? That's one that even cuts to the quick of ourselves, isn't it? How does one make peace with God when God is the one making peace with us? You better get right before you get left. Christ is coming, and what will you have to say for yourself when Christ comes? Lutherans don't fear that because other denominations who call, it the, call the rapture the coming of Christ for a millennia don't understand revelation. And on the other hand, we Lutherans believe in the rapture. That is, the coming and the raising of the quick and the dead. That is the true rapture, if we want to use that term. I don't particularly like it. I like the one that's in the Apostles' Creed rather than rapture. But still, let's give that term a try. So we have that advent on both sides. And so in, that adv in these advents that are bookends, we understand what the true advent season is. The coming of Christ in the flesh the coming of Christ in majesty to bring us to the new Jerusalem. And right in between the two, we wonder what is the advent of the second coming. 
And this is the most beautiful thing that could ever be done for us. If it's true that Christ comes in flesh and blood in the incarnation, and it's true that Christ comes in, the, in flesh and blood to rescue us from our sins and iniquities and bring us into the new Jerusalem, why wouldn't Jesus come in flesh and blood to us today? I used to ask my mom that question. And I don't think that there are very many people who could just answer that question as if someone just flippantly asked. So we have to ask the question, does Christ come for us today? Are we just waiting around until Christ comes to judge the quick and the dead? No. The second coming, where Christ comes in flesh and blood for your forgiveness and for the mercy that He has for you in glory that was given unto Him, in majesty which He wears the diadem on His head because of, in every single way, Christ comes to us in the Eucharist, in the body and blood. And in every way, from Him coming in the flesh, in Advent, into His mother, until He comes in the flesh to rescue us from this veil of tears. In every way, He comes to us in the body and blood of Holy Communion. If you do not believe that that is truly Christ's body and blood, do not commune. Lest you eat and drink in your to your condemnation and to your very damnation. That's how serious it is. If we truly believe that when Christ became man and Christ returns, and we put to those things which we do not see, which we will eventually see, then so is the glory and majesty that comes to us in His body and blood here. No more, no less. That is the Christ who comes to give you the promise that you will be the quick and not the dead. You will have life and life in you. And so let us not tarry in the second coming. Let us not use any more words to try to describe what the body and blood of Christ is there. I don't think I could describe it any more than this. Come taste and see of the second coming. And you will have the forgiveness of sins, life in you. So let us not wait any longer. Let us come. For Christ says, I have come. I have come in the body and blood here on this altar. And I will come again to judge the living and the dead. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.